Welcome to the December edition of What's in Bloom at the Ruth Bancroft Garden. So each month we put together a selection of plants that are in bloom in that particular month, and we print them out as a handout to visitors to the garden. So we're going to walk you through some of the selections for December at the Ruth Bancroft Garden. A lot of our beds here at the Ruth Bancroft Garden feature big, bold, dry growing plants like agaves and yuccas. And it's always nice to have some smaller, fine textured plants to go with those as a contrast. And this is a good example. This is Monardella linoides. It grows in Southern California in a wide variety of habitats. And it's a very aromatic plant. Uh, just a slight brushing of it, and it has a mint-like smell that's just delightful. And here it is in bloom in December, uh, with its little clusters of lavender pink flowers, uh, and a great plant for a dry landscape like the Ruth Bancroft Garden, Monardella linoides. In South Africa, there's a, a vegetation type called Fainboss, which means fine bush. So the uh, plants in this vegetation type generally have small, fine leaves. And there's three plant groups that dominate the Fainboss. And one of those is the Restionaceae. The Restios are kind of rush-like or, uh, or um, sedge-like plants. Uh, and then the second group is the Proteaceae, the Protea family, uh, with a lot of representatives found in Fainboss too. And the third prominent group is the Ericaceae, which is the heaths and heathers. And uh, so we know about the heather in Scotland and so on, uh, but the biggest group in the whole family, Erica, is heavily concentrated in South Africa in the Fainboss. And here's an example. This one is Erica pluconetii, uh, with very fine leaves, as typical of an Erica, and beautiful red flowers that are down-pointed. And uh, it's really coming into its own now uh, in the fall months. And uh, it does become a little bit larger than this in time, but uh, really off to a good start here. Uh, a great winter rainfall plant from South Africa, Erica pluconetii. Here at the Ruth Bancroft Garden, we have a lot of aloes, and many of them come from South Africa, which is home to a great many aloes. But we have some from much farther afield, including this one, Aloe Nibriana, which comes from Yemen on the Arabian Peninsula. So uh, Aloe Nibriana has a sort of a purplish cast to its leaves, which are quite thick, and uh, these spires of flowers which aren't totally smooth, they actually have a very fine pubescence to them, like peach fuzz. Uh, not obvious from a distance, uh, but that shows its uh, relationship to some of the other Arabian aloes that have uh, much longer hairs on their flowers. A very interesting trait, not found anywhere except in Northeast Africa and the Arabian Peninsula. Uh, Aloe nebriana usually has a taller inflorescence than this. This is rather on the short side, but quite delightful. Aloe nebriana. Plants in the Protea family are all from the Southern Hemisphere. And two places have a great concentration of species. One of these is Southern Africa, and the other place is Australia. Uh, one of the Australian genera is Hakia. And this one here is Hakia verrucosa from Western Australia. And uh, it is a, a little bit atypical of a hakia because the flower clusters are quite small. Usually they're more in a tight ball. Uh, and they also change color on this species, uh, becoming redder as they go. Uh, so you have this nice uh, combination of uh, white and pink and red in the flower clusters. It's very showy. The flowers are sort of a little bit of a curly cue, uh, which is reminiscent of another group of Australian plants in this family, uh, and that's the grevilleas. Uh, but this one's a hakia, and they have very hard, woody, nut-like uh, seed capsules that form uh, right against the uh, branches and are very long-lasting. Eventually, they will um, split open and the seed pops out. Uh, but anyway, the texture of this plant is uh, very uh, fine. It's sort of like a, a rosemary kind of a leaf and uh, makes lots and lots of flowers over a long period during the fall and winter months. And here it is in full flower now, Hakia verrucosa. 
Australia is home to lots of drought-tolerant plants, and no small number of those are in the myrtle family, Myrtaceae. This is the family to which the eucalyptus belongs and the bottle brush belongs, but also these wonderful shrubs called camelousiums. So this one is a hybrid called Camelousium matilda. And it's interesting that the flowers start out white. They're very long lasting. And then eventually uh, they get a little bit of red around the center and then they get more and more red as time goes along. So you have this nice effect with the white and the red together as the flowering progresses. Uh, this is a, a relatively small shrub, a sparse shrub, so it doesn't cast a lot of shade and uh, it comes from Western Australia, which has a Mediterranean climate much like ours, so they do really well here. And uh, this has been a, an all around great performer here at the garden, Camelousium matilda. The Ruth Bancroft garden has lots of agaves and the majority of these bloom during the summer months, but there are others that bloom uh, in the uh, winter time. And this is one agave microceps. It comes from Sinaloa in, uh, the lowland tropics on the uh, Mexico's west coast. And here it is in full bloom now. Uh, it's a quite compact agave that has the curling threads that uh, some agaves do. It makes a, a very ornamental effect and a very unusual flower color, kind of a uh, mauve gray color and then uh, in the bud stage. And then when it opens up, the face of the flower is pale yellow with yellow pollen. So this has started at the bottom and is working its way up. And here are the flowers that are open now and there are the buds that are yet to come. Agave microceps. Among the families of succulent plants found around the world, some are very widely distributed and others are uh, quite narrowly distributed. And one of the latter is the ice plant family. This one here is Glottophyllum linguiformi from South Africa, where most of the ice plants come from. Uh, this is a large group with about 1,800 species and the great majority of those in Southern Africa. Um, the ice plants range from really tiny things to uh, pretty good sized bushes, but a lot of them are uh, right along the ground like this glottophyllum is. The name uh, linguifor glottophyllum linguiformi sort of means uh, roughly uh, tongue leaf uh, in the form of a, of a tongue. So. Uh, that is really uh, descriptive of the glottophyllums in general, which have tongue-like leaves. And they're quite soft and flexible. We can see they're uh, bendable, pliable leaves, not stiff and rigid. And uh, different ones bloom at different times of the year. But this one, Linguiformi, is a plant that starts blooming in the late fall and blooms into the winter. So here it is in full bloom now as we go into December. Glottophyllum Linguiformi. That brings us to the end of our sampling of plants for the December edition of What's in Bloom at the Ruth Bancroft Garden. But remember, there's only so many plants we can fit into one of these What's in Bloom sheets, and there's a lot going on at the garden. So we encourage you to come visit the garden and see for yourself. Of course, there are lots of plants that don't bloom for a whole month or whose blooms overlap one month in another and are not long enough in either month to uh, qualify for What's in Bloom. So you can uh, come to the garden for yourself and see all the wonderful things that the garden has to offer. And if you're not near enough to come visit the garden, uh, check out our website, ruthbancroftgarden.org. Uh, lots of information on different plants and our plant highlights and our uh, social media posts and lots of classes to attend too. So check it out for yourself.